Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and we are taking a look at GitHub Actions. And so I figured what we do is just explore the UI, and I'll just tell you how you're gonna set your stuff up for the rest of, um, of this project. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to go ahead and uh, fork this repo because we need to run GitHub Actions in the repo, and I plan to run them all in GitHub Examples. So I want you to go ahead um, and do that now. I'm not gonna fork it because I don't wanna fork with my fork, um, but yeah, just go ahead and do that. And once you've done that, let's continue on here and take a look at some of the settings we have for GitHub Actions. So the actions will show up under this Actions tab and you can see that I've already ran a bunch and I actually have one here from uh, earlier. But if we go over to our Settings tab uh, and we go over here on the left-hand side to Actions, we can look at some settings we have. I don't really cover this stuff um, much anywhere else. So I figured it's a good opportunity just to get it out of the way in the start here. But you'll notice the first thing is that we have Action Permissions. So we can uh, determine um, what is allowed for our actions. So you can see that we have allow all actions and reusable workflows, disable actions if we want to turn it off, um, allow it uh, for all of exam pro or non-select actions and reusable users. So it's things that are more uh, specifically selected. So that is interesting there. Uh, something that I was surprised is that if you go to the settings tab, you don't have an option to turn off actions here. You basically just disable them here on the left-hand side. Um, then we have our artifact and log retention, which we'll come back to later when we look at artifacts, but you can see here, uh, it says 90 days uh, for save. Then we have fork pull request workflows from outside collaborators. Um, so whether you want to do these things, so just be aware that there are some settings here. But let's go back to the actions tab. Uh, and take a look at what we can do. So right now I have um, a workflow set in here. This is one we'll be doing in the future, but I just wanna show you where workflows exist. So if you go over to code, uh, and you go to .github folder, and into workflows, this is where you'll put your workflows. And a workflow file can be named whatever you want as long as it's YAML or YML, because these are YAML files, okay? Uh, and so here's, a, here's one that sets up a Postgres image that allows us to run Postgres. And you can have as many as you want in here. Um, what I have noticed is that you can have as many as you want, but um, over here on the left-hand side, this tab, It'll only support so many. So you can have, I don't know, it was like 20 or something. And then after that, they'll be there, but it's just hard to select them and see what's going on. So uh, you don't wanna have too many workflows in here. And there's not really a reason to have that many workflows, but I just wanna show you that you can have that many. All right, if we click into a workflow, again, we're just watching right now. Uh, we'll do something here in a moment. Uh, this workflow is disabled because I've, uh, I've disabled it just so that it doesn't run on push. But if we go into here, we can see information about it uh, and how it ran. So if I click into here, I can see all the steps it ran through. So it set up the job, it initialized the container, it checked out code, all these steps. So hopefully that gives you kind of a preview of um, what it looks like to create a workflow. But let's go ahead and make a new one. So your screen might look a little bit different because they might be showing you templates. But let's go ahead and hit new workflow. And so here we have a bunch of uh, workflows that we can work with. Okay, and so let's look for one that we could um, try out. So here we have something like greet users who are first time contributors to a repo. So we could click into this. And so now we have a template and so they're showing you um, a template where, it, and I'll just zoom this up here so we can have a closer look at what's going on. But here we have the name of the template and you don't have to have a name, but if you do have a name, let's go back over here for a moment, it will show up here. And if you don't have a name there, it'll just show the path to this file. So it'll just show like .github workflows greetings YAML. Then we have our on. So on is saying um, uh, like what event will trigger this. And so here, if we have a pull request target or an issue is opened, then it's going to trigger this to run. Then we define our jobs and we're, we're calling this the job greeting. We can name this whatever we want. It's just, that's what we call it. This is saying that it's gonna run on Ubuntu uh, latest. Okay, so it's running Ubuntu. We have some permissions, which I don't think I really get into much in the course, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll come back to that later on. Then down below we have steps, and then we have this thing that says actions first interaction version one. So the reason GitHub Actions is called GitHub Actions is because it has this modular component called actions, which allows you to define how these steps work. And so what we can do is we can actually take a look of this. I think this is a repo. If I just type this in like this, you'll notice 
github.com actions first interaction maps up with this. All right, so go here. And uh, yeah, it goes to here. So we can actually see that this is an external repo um, and they describe exactly how it's used. And the cool thing is that you can create your own actions in Git repos or GitHub repos um, and then utilize them. So the idea is that this is going to pass stuff into this and run it. But anyway, let's take a look here. So we have uses action with repo token, issue message and PR message. So with is our inputs. It's how we're inputting things into this action. And so if we were to go over to here, I've never looked at this action before, but let's take a look and see if we can make sense of it. So in here we have action.yaml. And so in here it should define inputs. So notice, we'll go back here again. Repo token, issue message, PR message. And we go here, repo token, issue message, PR message. And then down below here it says runs. And it says we're gonna run a uh, using Docker and it's gonna run this Docker image. So that I can go to here and we can click into this Docker file and we can see that it's running um, Buster Slim. So, so node version, uh, node 20 Buster Slim. It's gonna install um, our node packages and it's gonna run main.js. And then we can go take a look at main.js, which is under lib here. I wonder if this is like the compiled version. So this is the compiled version. So we probably go to source, it's probably the same thing. So it's TypeScript to JavaScript. And we can take a look at what this thing does. So here it runs a function. So first of all, it imports core and then GitHub. So we can utilize our actions there. And then it's bringing in those inputs here, as you can see, if they're not there, it's gonna throw an error. And then it's using um, OctoKit, which is the SDK for uh, GitHub. Um, and the idea is it's going to establish a client and then from there, it looks like it's going to try to detect whether somebody has opened a uh, ticket or not. And it's going to use the SDK to do that. So hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of how things uh, flow. But my, my point was is that if, if you find this, you can almost always look them up and dig, dig deeper if you want to know how they exactly work. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and I suppose go and deploy this. One other thing I want to point out is that we have the secrets.github token. So the idea is that this is going to grab our GitHub token. Usually you'd set this in your secrets file. So I'm not sure if this will work unless we set that. Let's go ahead and commit the changes and see if it works. So I'm going to go ahead and commit that. Okay, now notice that we have greetings.yml, so YAML file. If we go over to our actions, has it ran? And so notice that it hasn't ran. Now, if, if this was to be triggered on a push, let's go back over here for a moment uh, to the code. Close out these tabs here for a moment. So if we were to go back to here, if this was to say on push and we went here, it would have been triggered, okay? But it wasn't. So what would cause this to run? And if we go back to here, we can see, it's hard to get back to the code, but, um, We'll go back, sorry, we'll click here again. And it's expecting, there we go. It's expecting something with issues. And so I'm assuming that what it's saying is like, if you create an issue or use an issue, I'm just guessing, but we can go take a look and look up the documentation. So we'll say GitHub actions um, on events, events that trigger workflows. And then on the right-hand side here, we can take a look. So we'll type it up here and look at issues says here, um, so webhook event payload is issues, and then we have activity types. So there's probably a way that we can narrow it down. Um, I'm not sure if we could just put like a period here and then type the specific uh, thing, that'd probably be good to know, but it seems like if any of these are triggered, whether you open, edit, delete, if it's the first time somebody's done something, that, yeah, here, here it is. Okay, so we can on, open, types, open, edit, milestone. So we have to assume this is gonna trigger for any thing that happens with an issue. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is gonna go open a new issue and we'll say bug report, doesn't matter what it is. I want to report a bug. I'm gonna go down and create a new issue. And I'm gonna go back to actions and now notice that it's being triggered. So we're gonna click into this. Notice that it's queued up, okay? And if we click into here, it's starting the job. And it, it moves pretty fast, but you can see here that um, 
it's running the operating system 2022 04 LTS. And then it gets the runner image. All right. Notice that it gets our GitHub token, which is interesting because I didn't set a secret. So I guess it must just be already accessible. And then we are, uh, notice it says download action repository. So the idea is that these are, uh, again, remember that that GitHub, this repo here, is a, um, this GitHub action is a repo. And so it's going to download, not clone, but download this repo um, where um, uh, into this compute. And then we're going on to our build steps. And so it's doing some build steps. So it's just building the Docker container. And then it's running the interaction action. So it's going to run <laughs> this step here. If we go down here. So right, we're on this step. Okay. And then we see some logging. And notice that it's running this Docker container. So remember that this repo here, when we looked into it, it's running a Docker file. And so it's basically running this Docker container and passing all the stuff to it. And it says checking if it's the user's first contribution. So if we copy this, I bet we could find this in the um, TypeScript code. All right, and I search for it. And so there it is. That's what it's logging right there. All right, it says adding message. Message will be displayed on the user's first issue, issue 13. So again, if we search part of this, it probably shows up, probably not all of like this, but we probably just take some of this out here. Okay, not showing anything, that's totally fine. But anyway, uh, my point is, that's how you can trace through, through to it. And having pragmatic knowledge not just of YAML, but coding knowledge is going to make it so much easier to work and understand with GitHub Actions, especially if something goes wrong. All right. Um, but for the most part, when we want to create actions, I don't really go to new workflows. I just create what I, what I want. But it is nice to go in here. You can click into this stuff and see what's going on. So I can click at this Ruby on Rails one. And, uh, you know, here I can see this one setting up Ruby on Rails and stuff like that. And maybe we'll take a look at these later on. But for the most part, we will end up creating workflows manually. Um, so now the next thing I want to do is I have this workflow, but let's say I don't want to use this workflow anymore. What we can do is we can go disable it so it doesn't run. So if I was, let's say I was to open another ticket, um, I wouldn't want, well, actually, first of all, would this even run again? Because if we were to open another ticket, I don't think it would. So it'd only be the next person, but let's just say I did not want it to run again. We can go up here to the top right corner and disable the workflow. Okay, so now that's disabled. Let's say we don't want these workflows at all in here anymore. Um, we would have to delete them out and then they would just vanish from here. So let's go ahead and kind of simulate that. So I've gone back to code here. And what I'm gonna do is press period on my keyboard, period. And what that's gonna do is open this up in github.dev. So all it's doing is saying github.dev and then the repo name afterwards. This is something we do a lot in the GitHub Foundations course. Um, this will not cost you anything to run because it is 100% free. There is no compute running. Uh, per se, there's no um, uh, server attached to this. But let's say I'm done with these and I don't want to mess with these anymore. I'm gonna just gonna take these and I'm gonna drag them. You just need to delete them, but I'm gonna drag them into my templates folder because I don't want to really get rid of them. Um, okay. And so now they're over here. And you can see I have a bunch of templates, so we're gonna have a lot of fun uh, uh, working through this. I'm gonna go ahead and just save these changes. So I'll just say, move these to save them for later. All right, and if we go back to actions, notice it doesn't show them here anymore. Um, I have these previous runs over here. We can go in and uh, we can delete this workflow run. Because personally, it's a big mess. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna clean this up so that everything looks really clean here. So when I'm working through this, so just give me a moment, I'm gonna pause and just delete them all, okay? All right, there we go. So I've cleaned everything up. And yeah, this is probably what it looked like for you when you first came into here. And so probably what you would have to do is, is click this button here. Of course, uh, probably would have helped if I told you that earlier. Um, but yeah, so that is the experience. Um, hopefully that gives you a, a good start um, to what GitHub Actions is. It's not very hard to use or learn, um, but we do need to do a lot of iterations here. And so that's what we're gonna do and look at all the features in particular and you'll find that uh, you'll know how to use GitHub Actions really well in a very short amount of time.
See you soon.